All right. It's good to see everybody tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being here. And uh, all our bellies are stuffed, right, right now? I said Vicky's, right? So thank y'all for coming out. Maybe more people will come in as, as we get started. Uh, if not, that's okay. We know it was going to be a little bit of a, um, a different Wednesday tonight. But I just want to, don't forget that we are having church on Sundays. Sunday, Pastor Jamie will be preaching. And you want to make sure that you're here uh, for that. Amen. And uh, well, if you have your Bibles, why don't we go ahead and go open to the book of Galatians. Thank you for all those that are watching online. Uh, please like and share the video. Uh, let us uh, know that you're watching. Comment. Let us know where you're watching from and so that we can uh, see you. And, and uh, it always encourages us so that, to see you watching online. So, I don't know how far we're going to get tonight, but uh, we will try to get as far as we can. And uh, how many of y'all are enjoying this series? Amen. Amen. I'm learning. I'm learning things too. You know, I, I I sat in my office all day. I didn't go to bed till twelve thirty last night. I had a, a full day. I had work I had to do. And how many of you know that? Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. Sometimes I can be a procrastinator. Y'all know what a procrastinator is? Waits till the last minute to get things done. And so I was like that with this message. I waited till the last minute. And so I was in my office all day, ate supper, took a shower, and I usually relax in the evening. And I went back to my office and then go to bed till 1230. Woke up this morning, back in the office. Grandma called me this morning. I said, what are you doing? I said, I'm in the office again. And I'm working on my message. And then I still had to work. But I told Jamie, never going to do that again, because I don't like, when you're doing a series, you don't want to put it off to the last minute. And, uh, but I learned my lesson this week. Hallelujah. But it's good to see everybody again, and uh, we're going to continue uh, talking about this. And, uh, you know, uh, why don't we pray, and then we'll get started. How about that? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Father, for all those that are here tonight. I just thank you that we're able to come together as a body of believers to hear your word, to learn your word, God. And I'm asking you, God, as the word goes forth tonight, that you help us, God. Help us to learn, help us to grow, help us to gain understanding. Help us to have hearts to receive, Lord. And I pray, God, that if there's anything else you want us to see that I have prepared, that you'd open our eyes and speak to our hearts. Help us not just to see the information, but help us to see how it speaks to us and relates to us in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Pastor Jamie. So in chapter one, don't go there, but I'm just going to kind of review to kind of fill this in with where we're at. In chapter one, Paul writes this stern letter, right, to the Galatians. And the Galatians, their church was in Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey. You remember all that? And if you don't, we're getting a refresher for, so we can get into this. And then Paul starts his letter off by giving his introduction, right? He says, hey, I'm an apostle. God's called me, and I'm here to, to tell you what you need to do. And he starts correcting them, right? He says, I'm just marveled. I'm surprised that you're turning away from the gospel, and you're turning into another gospel. And then he says, hey, there's no other gospel. The only gospel that there is is the gospel of the grace of Christ. That's what we saw in chapter one. And then he says, what? If anybody preaches any other gospel than the gospel we preach, he said, let them be accursed. He says, even if an angel comes down from heaven and preaches another gospel to you, he says, let them be accursed. And he says, hey, I'm telling you all this because I'm not here to please man. I'm here to please God. Amen. And he said, God called me to be an apostle. And then he gets into his, I call it his resume. Right. He goes into his resume and he says, look, God called me when I was didn't know him when I was a religious Pharisee. He said, but God called me. God chose me. God ordained me in my mother's womb. And he gave me this ministry as a purpose. And then he says, I didn't consult with any man. Yet. Right. And then Pastor Jamie came up the following uh, chapter in chapter two and he picks it up. Right. He's and he continues that resume thought. Diane, he says, you know what? He says, I didn't consult with any man until a few years. And then he says, I went to Jerusalem to the headquarters church. I mean, if y'all know that every big major company has a corporate office. Yeah. Right. Well, I want you to think about the church like that. The church in Jerusalem was the, the big boss. They were the head church. And that's where Peter, James, 
and them were located. They were the leader. Uh, James was the leader of the church in Jerusalem. And so Peter, uh, Paul goes to them and Paul begins to share his gospel with them. Right. And, and he begins to throw these. He says, hey, look, this is what God's given me. The message that I'm preaching is to the Gentiles. And the Bible says that, hey, the, 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 the apostle said, hey, we can't add to it. There's no way we can add to what you're saying because God's already, you know, sealed it with his authority and his power. Right. And then he goes on to say that. Um, I, I didn't preach it, so I have to read it. Look over it. But he says that. Uh, and then he talks about and then he gives a story about Peter. Right. He says that Peter, Peter, uh, he's, he talks about an incident that he had with Peter, how he was eating with they were eating with the Gentiles. And then he said when the Jewish people came in to check out their freedom. He says that Peter began to play the role of a hypocrite. And Peter did what? He went back to sitting with the Jews. Now, Pastor Jamie didn't say this, but I wanted to say this because I thought it was very interesting when we were reading that. I thought about the fact that P Peter was called a hypocrite by Paul. But he wasn't called a hypocrite, Vicky, because he was out there in the world. He was called a hypocrite because he left the truth. Church, you may you may say, well, Pastor Larry, I don't want to be a hypocrite. That's why I don't, don't I don't I don't go out there to the world. I don't do the things of the world. But you know what? If your heart's not anchored in God's grace and you're believing another message, then you are playing the role of a hypocrite. You understand? Yeah. We don't we don't we can't turn away from the gospel. That's why, church, I don't I don't I'm not I'm not saying this because I want us to sound like we're a cult because we're not a cult. But I do want to tell you is that if you leave this church and you find another church, I hope that you find one that's preaching the truth to you. I, I talked to somebody this week, my grandma and, and them, they, we were there and uh, somebody said, I said, we miss you. How come you haven't been to church? They told me over the phone. My grandma and them all heard it. They said, we've already been to three different churches. And they said, and ain't nobody preached like you and Jamie. They said, we'll be back. But come on back. I told them, were, you're right. And nobody going to preach it like that. So you might as well just come back. <laughs> right? They said, we don't, we, they don't preach and they don't, they don't explain things the way you and JV do. I said, well, y'all might as well just drive and come on back. Amen? But the thing is this. is that what? I'm not saying they left the gospel. What I'm saying is that you leave and you, th you, know, you go to a bigger church or you look for other places to hear the word. And I'm not saying that nobody else is preaching the truth or nobody else is preaching things that are not important. But what I am saying is that Church, once you come into the freedom of God's grace, don't be drawn back to that religious views. You understand what I'm saying? Because all it does is it brings you into bondage. And you know what? When you do that, when you turn away from the gospel and when you turn to a different gospel, Paul says you're being a hypocrite because that's what Peter did. Right. Peter, Peter ate with the Gentiles, Jamie. He ate with them as of saying what? They're accepted. They're in the family of God. But as soon as the religious people came that preached the law, what did he do? He started acting like them. So you know what, church? You may have friends and you may have family that believes different from you. And you don't have to be a, a Bible thumper. What I mean by that, you don't have to, you know, smack them in the head with the Bible. You can love them and you can be for them and, and, and thank God that they're trying to look for God. Maybe you know that they're going to a church that doesn't preach grace. But you know what you can do? You can be loving and you can be compassionate, but you yourself don't walk away from the truth. Amen. You pray for your family. Amen. Amen. I have family, right? I have family that goes to, a, to different churches. Some of my family doesn't even believe what I believe. But you know what? I'm not going to change what I believe because they're my family. Right. All I say is that, hey, they just don't know. They haven't heard the word. They, they, their eyes have not been illuminated. Amen. But thank God the scales have been lifted from your eyes. Amen. And now you know the truth. Yes. And how many of you know that once you hear the truth, it's really hard to, to, go, back. to go back? Yes, it is. Right? Amen. So don't ever go back to the chains of religion. And if you are... You'd be like Peter. You'd be, you'd be playing the role of a hypocrite. Amen. So I want you all to see hypocrite as twofold. Yes, a hypocrite is. The, what is a hypocrite? A hypocrite is the word for hypocrite in, in the Bible. It means somebody who goes on a stage. And, you know, like a, like a stage play, Grandma. And they wear a different mask. One minute they're acting like something. And then they go and they put on a different outfit there that's what a hypocrite is and that's what so 
when you act like something that you're not, you're being a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. Can I make, I feel like preaching, Pastor Jamie. Can I go a step further? Yes. When you start saying things like, God doesn't love me, I'm not blessed, I don't know if I'm saved, you know what you're doing? You're being a hypocrite. Because you know what you're doing? You're saying the opposite of what God says about you. Amen. God says you're holy, Vicky. God says you're righteous. Yeah, amen. And so whatever you feel, whatever you think, whatever I think about myself or how I feel about myself, it, it, the moment that I start thinking the opposite of the way God thinks about me and the way I know God's called me to be, then I'm being a hypocrite. I'm trying to encourage you tonight. So whenever, so don't confess what you're not. Confess what you are. Amen. All right. Even if you don't see it happening in your life, speak it. Speak it right. You you speak it because it's true. Amen. Amen. It's like I, it's like, well, you know, we're talking. Chris was not here today, but I'm just saying. Remember, I had mentioned her testimony Sunday when I was talking about her with the anxiety. I told her, I said, Crystal, you got to speak it, even though you don't feel that way. It's right. Right. You can do it. You just got to speak it. You say, well, Pastor, sorry, it does, well, I'm sick. It doesn't matter. You speak health to yourself. And the moment you start, you start thinking, you start, you start saying, I'm not righteous. I'm not holy. I'm, I'm not loved by God. Then what are you doing? You're changing your, your identity. I mean, you, really, you can't change your identity, but you're acting like you're somebody that you're not. Right? I hear some Christians say, well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, you're not a sinner. Listen to me. If you have accepted the Lord, you are not a sinner. Amen. You may sin, but you're not a sinner. Amen. Okay? Do Christians sin? Yes. yes. But does that make us a sinner? No. Because our identity has been changed. We are Amen. sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen. You were a sinner before you got saved. Yes. You were outside of the family of God. But when you accepted the Lord... You became a son of a daughter of the most high God. Right. So saints commit sin, but saints are not sinners. Right. Saints fall into sin, but they don't live in sin. Saints, you know, fall off of the wagon, but that's not who they are. All right. So it doesn't matter what I don't care if you battle addictions. I don't care if you cuss every time you get mad, you cuss. I don't care if every time you you, uh, you know, somebody says something to you on the road, you end up shooting the finger. I don't know. I'm just saying stuff, maybe, you know, whatever. You know, you get mad and you have you feel the need to, to drink and get drunk or whatever. What I'm saying to you is that just because you have a struggle, just because you have a habit does not mean that you are not saved and that you are not a sinner. Are you with me? You are who Christ says you are even in the midst of your struggle, right? The prodigal son, was he not a child of God? Yes. Yes. He walked away, did he not? Yes. But what, when, 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 the, when the father saw him, what did he say? He said, hey, my son has come back. He didn't say my servant came back. He didn't say the sinner came back. He said my son has returned. So in the father's eyes, the father still saw him as a son, even though he was living in the pig's pen. Right. So, you know what? When you do something you shouldn't do, you say something you shouldn't say and you act in a way that you shouldn't act. You say, Lord, I thank you that I'm the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. Now, come on. We all do it. Yes. We all make mistakes. Right. But you say, Lord, I thank you that I'm the righteousness of God. Amen. All right. Does that make sense? OK. So he tells Peter, don't do don't do any of that. And then we're going to pick it up in chapter three. Are you all ready? That's enough review. Uh, if you want to remember what we talked about, I encourage you to read it again, chapter 1 and chapter 2. Amen? Sometimes, church, you have to reread things so you can grasp it. All right? So he says in chapter uh, 3, Paul picks it up. Look what he says. He says, Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly Portrayed among you as crucified. So notice what Paul starts off by saying. Paul says, oh, foolish Galatians. Now, the word foolish there is going to be strong. The word actually there, it means to be stupid. 
Come on. Mary, I also want to pick on you. Can I pick on you? What about if I always say, oh, you stupid Mary? Most people would leave, right? How can a pastor talk to me like that? But how can Paul talk like that? Paul said, oh, stupid Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Now, so it, it means to be stupid or it means to be without understanding. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Now, let me show you one translation of this. Pastor Jamie, uh, can you go to the, I'm going to show you the uh, J.B. Phillips translation. I think it's the next screen, Pastor Jamie. Look what he says. Now, this is a, this is a translation. Look what he says. Oh, you dear idiots of Galatia, who saw Jesus Christ the crucified so plainly. Now, the word foolish, you can go back, Pastor Jamie. The word foolish here, it, 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 it doesn't mean somebody who doesn't know. Like somebody here that is just dumb, right? You know, there's some things that you don't know that you learn, right? Yeah. Somebody said, uh, I think it was Jamie said something to me yesterday. And I said I, I said, I never knew that. You taught me something new. I had never heard that or never knew that. Well, it, it's, not that, it's not that I was acting dumb. It says I was because I was ignorant of that. Are you with me? Now, the, what I'm trying to say is, is when you study this word foolish, like in a deeper sense, it's not saying, oh, foolish Galatians, as in they never knew. What it's actually saying is this. You know, but you're acting like you don't know. The idea, let me tell you what I, my, I wrote in my notes. I'm just going to read what I wrote in my notes. The idea of foolish here is not that people had mental issues. This is from a dictionary. This is not my, this is not Larry Grandma. This is from what I read in, in the study, uh, my study books. The idea of foolish here is not that people had mental issues, but that they were unwilling to use their mental facilities to get understanding, Pastor Jamie. In other words, they didn't want to learn. They didn't want to have understanding. And Paul says, because you're acting like that, you're foolish. Church, God doesn't want us to be ignorant. Do y'all know that? Yeah. God doesn't want us to be idiots. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> y'all read it. I didn't make it. I'm not making it up. God doesn't want you to be foolish. God doesn't want you to be without understanding. Yeah. God wants you to know what you believe, yeah. why you believe, yeah. and why you stand on what you stand on. Yeah. Look what he says here. We're going to come back to Galatians, but y'all know I always like to jump around to bring other scriptures to connect it. Look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. We're going to come back to Galatians. But Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Look what he says. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Amen. 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 Y'all know what it means when it says wisdom is the principal thing? The, the word principal there means it's the first. Mm -hmm. The most important thing that you could ever have in your life is not riches. It's not financial blessing. I'm going to go a step further. It's not even health. It's wisdom. That's what he says here. The writer says here, wisdom is the principle or wisdom is the first thing. Therefore, in your getting, get wisdom. What does that mean? Wisdom. Wisdom is you being able to make right decisions. You being able to look at the problem and let the Lord lead you and let the Lord teach you on how to solve that problem. Come on. Yeah, anybody ever, maybe you've been in a situation with your family, maybe with your children, and you ever say things like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Right? I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm speaking to somebody else tonight. Amen. Now, now, that's true. You may not know what you're going to do, because I've been in situations, too, where I don't know what I'm going to do, or I, what, what to say, or how to say it. You know, even as a pastor, when I'm counseling people on the phone, and, and they've been uh, molested. I've dealt with people who were molested. I've dealt with people who been abused, all that kind of stuff, and or they've lost a loved one, Mary. And sometimes I don't know what to say because I don't feel like 
I'm praying for you is enough. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. They know you're praying for you, and it's like you want to give them some kind of some kind of encouragement, yeah. Diane, or a word that's going to help them. Yeah. And sometimes I'm lost for words, and I'm like, God, I don't know what to do. You know what I need to ask the Lord for? Yeah. Wisdom, Lord. Lord, give me the wisdom on how to handle this situation. Lord, how, Lord, how do I approach it? Lord, how do I deal with it? Church, let me tell you something. Even when you're talking to your family about the Lord, you need wisdom. Because let me tell you something. You can say the right thing at the wrong time. Right? You know, you can tell your family, you know what? If you don't have faith in Jesus and you die, you're going to hell. Now, is that true? Yeah, that is true. Right? If we're not saved, we're not going to be with the Lord. Okay? But... Do you think that that's the wisest way to tell them? No. It's probably not. So what you need? You need wisdom. Yeah. Lord, Lord, how do I share this with them? Lord, how do I bring this understanding to them? That's right. Amen. When I speak to my pastor friends, I have friends that I talk to that don't believe everything I believe. And when I try to present something to them, I, you know, one of the ways I always tell them is, well, have you ever considered it this way? Mm-hmm. Have you ever looked at this verse in this particular way? What am I trying to do? I'm trying to get my point across, but in a way that's going to be where they can receive it. Amen. Well, they'll be able to understand what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, I don't just go and say, that's wrong. That's not what the Bible says. You know, you're, you're not, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I could say all that, but that's not wisdom, Diane. And all it's going to do is it's going to make people close the door. Yeah. Right. So I say, what do I do when 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 my loved one's not coming to church or my loved one's not serving the Lord? Ask the Lord to give you wisdom. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe there'll be a time when y'all are talking about something at the table or you're at lunch with them or you're somewhere you're talking on the phone with them and God's going to open the door at the right time and you're going to be able to share that word with them. And they're going to say, man, I really needed that. Thank you. What is that? Pastor? That's wisdom. That's you having the wisdom to handle it. Are you with me, church? And then he says, in all of your getting, get understanding. Now, what did he say in Galatians? He said, you're foolish. You don't know. You're acting like idiots. Because they, they weren't walking in understanding. And, Paul, and the Bible says here, in all of your getting, get understanding. Amen. Do y'all know how many Christians sit in church and they have no idea what the preacher's saying? Amen. Amen. That's it. Come on. I know people who've been in church over 25 years and they don't know nothing about the Bible. Mm-hmm. And it's a sad thing. Because how can you sit in a church Week after week, you hear the preacher, you listen to the preacher, but you don't, you yourself don't know the Bible because you're not being taught. Being taught. Yeah. And you know what? You're not getting understanding. That's it. Are you with me, church? Yeah. And I know, you know, sometimes you may say, well, Pastor, we, you know, sometimes we spend weeks, you know, we did the series, right, yeah. on, um, on what we believe, right, on, on faith and grace and all that kind of stuff. And you say, Pastor, why do we do that? Why do we spend so much time on things like that? Because in all of your getting, get understanding. Yeah. Right. That's, good. That's why here at this church, we don't ever baptize people until they know what baptism is. You know why? What's the point of getting wet? You don't even know why you're getting wet. I know people who got baptized. I'm saying, why did you get baptized? Well, I mean, I don't know. He said we need to be baptized because the Bible say. OK. And then I tell them, where does the Bible say it? Now, I know where the Bible says it, but I'm asking them if they know where the Bible says it. Why they're doing it. Because they, because they don't know. They don't have understanding. Amen? That's why, church, when we do communion, we always talk about what communion is, right? Yeah. What it represents, the blood and, 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 and the, um, the, the body of Jesus Christ, right? That he's a true bread of life and that we do this in remembrance of him, right? And when we receive the communion elements, it's, it's not the elements that do anything for us, but it's that we take them in faith as if we're receiving the yeah. healing now, yeah. right? As we're receiving that cleansing now. But it's not the elements that have any power. Right. But y'all understand all, y'all understand all that language because we've taught y'all what it yeah. means. And you know that when you take it in faith, it, something can happen yeah. in your life. Yeah. But yeah. a lot of people, they sit in church and they don't get understanding. Mm-hmm. Like even, even and I'm just going to pick on my own group because I, I mean, I'm, I know I pick on other sometimes denominations or whatever, but I'm going to pick on my own. Even Pentecostal people. That's right. All they know how to do is talk in tongues. They don't watch TV. They know how to run around the church. They know how to jump and shout. They know how to yell and dance. But they don't know nothing about the Bible. Because you know what they're into? They just want to feel the high. That's it. 
You know, they just want to feel the goosebumps. Yes. They just want to feel uh, 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 the tingling. They just want to talk and talk, but they don't want to. They're not interested in learning the scriptures. Yes. But we don't only need the spirit. I mean, y'all know I always say we need the word. Yes. The Bible says in, in John, it says we're supposed to worship the Father in spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Ghost. We want God to move. But we also want to worship in spirit and in truth. And the truth is God's word. Amen. We need to learn what this Bible says. Because there's a lot of false prophets out there. And what you don't know, church, is going to hurt you. Right? How many of you know, you know, when you, uh, you know, what everybody's talking about these gun laws or whatever and things like that. And, and I, I'm not, I'm I, Maybe we do need stricter gun laws because some people's crazy out there. But here's my thing. You would never, you would never give a three-year-old a gun, a fully loaded gun, right. right? Because he doesn't, he can't handle that. Right. But as your son gets older, your children get older, you teach them, right? Yeah. Or even when they're driving, let's say you use that. That's more, more um, common ground we can all agree on. You know, like a car, you won't put a, a five-year-old behind a car and just say, well, go ahead to town and bring me some milk and come back. Right. Not in this day you wouldn't. Maybe when you were raised, but. Uh, but you made it through it. Amen. But what I'm saying is that you wouldn't do it because they're immature and they're not ready to handle it. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that as we grow in our life, in our through life, as we become more mature, we start to learn those things. We understand how to use a car. We understand how to how to, you know, uh, use a gun, how to load the gun, how to put the how to lock the gun and all those things that we need to be having in order for us to be safe and how to drive safe. Right. And so it is with God's word. When you get in God's word, you have to have understanding. Yes. And these Galatians here, Paul says, Paul says, I just don't understand how y'all are acting so foolish. Yes. Let me show you something that I read in a commentary. Now, I have so many commentaries on my computer, I don't able to read all of them. Okay? I have like over 40 commentaries. But I was going through one commentary today. Never saw it in this commentary until today. Now, I even put it on the screen. Now, this commentary is talking about Galatians. And look what he says, Pastor Jamie. Would you bring it up? He says, one of the most dangerous dichotomies in the Christian life is for the spiritual to be divorced from the doctrinal. Experience from theology. In the most explicit charismatic passage in the New Testament, Paul insisted that we should sing and pray not only in the spirit, but also with our minds. Do y'all see that? What is he saying? He's saying in Christian circles today, most spiritual people don't have no understanding about the, the doctrine. Doctrine there means teachings. They don't know nothing about the teachings of the church. But he says, even in Paul's most charismatic, he's talk, when he talks about the charismatic passage, he's talking about Corinthians right there that he gives. And charismatic means what we believe. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in speaking in tongues. He says, even in Paul's charismatic passage, he even insisted that people not only pray in the spirit, but they also pray with their minds. Church, don't ever be deceived by what people do. Always pay attention to what they teach you. Right. Yeah, I mean, how many of y'all know back in the 80s and stuff, there was a, all these like fake evangelists, healing evangelists on TV. Right. I mean, some of them are on there. Sometimes you stay up real late, Vicky, and you watch Christian television. Some of them are selling miracle spring water. Yes. Oh, yeah. They want you to buy a little pack of water and drink it. And if you drink it, you're going to be healed because this I can. Do, how do you know that water is from Israel? <laughs> Come on. That water can be from the sink. You, and people buy it by the dozens. Why? Because they, they're, they're so caught up in the charismatic of it, of, of oh, man, this is going to make me feel good. This is going to heal my body. But yet they're not looking at what the man's teaching. And when the man's not teaching the truth, they'll say, you know, it doesn't matter how many people he lays out on the floor or whatever. If, if he's not living a, uh, what the word of God says, then that's not somebody you want to be involved with. Right. I know a well-known preacher. I'm not going to say his name. I know a well-known preacher who's very popular today, and he's got a big church. He used to go to Lakewood Church. I'll give you a clue. He don't go to Lakewood no more, but he was actually at Lakewood Church. He was a minister at Lakewood Church, and then he started his own church. Very popular. He even comes on TBN, but you know what he does? He can't keep his pants zipped up, if you know what I mean. 
And yet, his church is still packed every Sunday because he's such a good speaker. You know what? You see, that's what I'm saying, church. We can be drawn by the charismatic gift of somebody yes, yes, you're right. that we have to say, but are they living the word? Because if they ain't living the word, if they're not yeah, preaching the gospel, then we need to get away from people like that. Or not get away, they need to sit down and let somebody else take over. But you know what? It's because people don't have understanding. Amen. People don't know how to deal with these issues. Yes. Right? You know, let me, let me give you another example just to kind of help you with when it comes to understanding. You know, the Bible forbids, I don't know if y'all ever knew this, but the Bible forbids for Christians to go to court against another brother. In other words, if I ran over Brother Albert's leg in my wheelchair, <laughs> and let's say I broke his leg, he made me, maybe he just, I was gonna say he made me mad, maybe he just got in my way, I'll say it like that. No. Let's say he upset me and I, and I got mad and I ran him over and I broke his leg. And then Albert wants to take me to court and we go to court. Biblically, we are sinning. Mm -hmm. Because Paul says that Christians shouldn't take other brothers and sisters to, to court. Yes. But that the matter should be settled between them. Yes. Well, Pastor, what about my coworker? Your coworker is not a Christian. We're not talking about them. Right. Take them to Judge Judy. We're talking about brothers and sisters in church. Right. Are y'all with me? Yes. How many people have you met left a church because they didn't like the way somebody looked at them, yeah. right? Or I didn't like what they said, so I'm not going back. Do y'all know that that person is sinning or not, or not pleasing the Lord? How do I know that? Because the Bible says if you have a problem with your brother, now Jesus said this, Grandma. He said if you have, there you go, Mary. If you have a problem with your brother or sister, he says go to them. He says, and he, you know what he says? He says, leave your gift at the altar. Yes. Don't, even take don't even take your gift to the altar. In other words, whatever you're trying to bring to the Lord in prayer and stuff, don't even bring it to him. Mm -hmm. Just leave it. Yeah. God wants you to go make it right with your brother. Yes. He says, go make it right with your brother. He says, and if your brother won't listen, you know what he says, Diane? He said, then take somebody else with them. And then, yeah, right, that's what we would do. And then he says, and then he says, if they still don't listen, then tell the whole church. Yes. And then, the, and then if you still don't listen to the whole church, you know what the Bible says then? The Bible says then to put them out the church. Yes. That's right. But sorry, well, how come people don't do that? Because people don't read their Bibles. That's right. I'm serious. That's right. It's so easy for us to say, well, I don't like this church. Because they looked at me in such and such way. Or they said so and such and such. Well, if you were offended by what was said by me, Pastor Jamie, by Sister Gloria, or Brother Albert, your job is not to leave. Your job is to come to that brother or sister and say, hey, you know what? Can we talk alone? I don't want to let you know. You know, you offended me. I didn't appreciate what you said. Or I felt like it was, you know, talking about me. Or, or you know, and I, I just want to see, can we, so can we settle this matter? That's the godly way. The godly way is not to, for you to leave and say, I want, well, I don't have to stay here. I'm going to go somewhere else. That's right. I'm serious, church. Yes. Why? Because the Bible says it. Don't be foolish. All right. I just wanted to say that just nobody's, I'm not saying anybody here is mad or anything. I'm just saying is that that's an issue that we don't talk about, right? That's right. There's things like that that we, we just kind of, you know, uh, Look over. We don't consider those things. Right? And, uh, all right, Galatians chapter, go back to Galatians chapter 1. I mean, chapter 3, I'm sorry. Boy, we learned a lot in just one verse, huh? So don't be foolish. Right? Don't be unlearned. God wants you to have wisdom. He's telling, the, he's telling them, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Now, the word bewitched there. Y'all ready for this? It means to give somebody the evil eye. <laughs> That's what the word means, Pastor JV. <laughs> Who has given you the evil eye? Or it can also mean who cast a spell on you. 
Now, I'm going to let you write, and then I'm going to ask you something, okay? Now, a spell would involve magic, right? Would y'all agree with that, at least that general definition, okay? Let's not get too technical about it, but just that general definition. We would say if somebody's putting a spell on you, then they're doing some kind of magic. Or, or we would say witchcraft, right? right. Okay. Witchcraft. Voodoo, right? Okay. I just want you to follow me with this. Think about the letter. Think about what Galatians is about. So he tells them, who has put a spell on you? Who has given you the evil eye that you should not obey the truth? What is the truth in this, in this, in this book? It's about grace, right? Yes. They're going back to the law, yes. specifically circumcision, like Pastor Jamie yes. said. Pastor Jamie, they're going back to the law, and they're, which is the truth. They're leaving that because somebody is putting witchcraft on them. We'll say it that way. In other words, when you leave the truth, it's just as demonic as somebody doing something out there like tarot card reading. That's my point. See, we only look at magic in the evil sense, right? Like, oh, I'm going to go to this, this and she's going to tell me where my mama's at or something. I don't know. I don't know what they do because I ain't never been to one. Hallelujah. But... You know, are you going to go to this card reader or palm reader and they're going to tell you, you know, your future or, or why you why are you having a stomach ache? Because you eat too much grease. That's what it is. You don't need. <laughs> no. But, you know, you go you do all these things. Right. And you say, well, somebody did something to me. Somebody did something. To, somebody did something to my loved ones. And so in, in your idea, we think that that's witchcraft. Right. And it is. It, it is because it's a, it's a different spirit. Right. But what I'm saying is that. We only think of magic or evilness in that particular incident. Yeah. But it's amazing that Paul shifts it here. And Paul says there's even magic being done in the church. Uh -huh. That there are preachers who are putting a spell on you uh -huh. to make you leave the truth. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you, oh, Jamie, who was the man? Uh, uh, Jim Jones, right? Yeah. What did he do? He made all them people drink Kool-Aid. And they all died. Yeah. Right? What about the, uh, what's the other one we've been watching, Jamie? About the Mormon, about the latter, uh, the fundamental Latter-day Saints, Mormons? Uh, mm -hmm. <sighs> no, he was in Texas, actually. Uh, Waco? 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 Warren Jeffs. Yeah, yeah about Warren Jeffs. Uh, he, had, he was like a part of the, um, the fundamental Latter-day Saints of the Mormon church. And they were in Arizona, right? I believe they were in Arizona or something. And then they moved their, their, their church, and they bought a big old field in Texas, and they, had a, they built a church, and they built a community there. And what he was doing is he was marrying underage girls yes, yes. and having sex with them. Yes. And these women were giving their kids over to this man yes. because he's supposed to be the prophet of God. Right. And then eventually the government got involved. If, if y'all want to y'all want to see the documentary, go on Netflix. Netflix has a documentary. I've watched watched it all. It's it's very interesting, but it's sad and sad. You know why? Because these people have put their faith in this man. Yeah. Yeah. What are they? They're bewitched. Yeah. There's been a spell put over their eyes that they can't see the truth. Right. Yeah. Are you with me, church? Yeah. And so what Paul's saying here is that, you know what? Somebody's cast a spell here. Somebody's doing something to y'all that's causing you to walk away from the truth. Mm -hmm. That's why, church, always be careful what people say. Yes. Yes. Don't ever listen to a preacher that says, you can't go to no other church but this church. Mm -hmm. Or if you leave this church, you're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. Or if you, come, if you walk out of me, if you find somewhere else to go, you know, then you're going to go to hell. They try to control you. You understand? They want to know all your business. Yeah. The day I want to know all your business, Vicky, you say, you being too nosy, Pastor Larry. Okay? <laughs> and I'll stop. But I'm not like that. Okay? You don't want to tell me? You can just say, I'd rather not talk about it. But I'm not the type of person to, my grandma can tell you, I don't the type of person to ask people in church, oh, where are you, you know, why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? Tell me, you know, I'm just like, you know, somebody tells me, I'm just picking on Vicky. You know, they, I saw Vicky over here. 
she was with some man or whatever. I think that's her Sancho or whatever. I'm going to say, well, Vicky, you know what I tell people? She hasn't told me. I haven't seen her. So I, that's between her and the Lord. I'm not going to call Vicky and say, Vicky, you know what? I heard so-and-so and you need to tell me because I'm your pastor. No, I'm not nobody. I'm only, I can only deliver the message, but I can't save your soul. Right? We, we want to meet him, though. No, I'm just like. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. You right? Come on, Lord. She wants that Boaz like we talked about Sunday. <laughs> right? But so he says, don't be witched here, right? Now, look what he says. He says, some, y'all are acting foolish. I don't have understanding. He says, somebody has put a cast a spell over you because y'all are walking away from the truth. He said, but look what he says in the last part. He said, before who, you should not obey the truth. He said, before your, whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. What is he saying there? This is what he's saying. I'm going to sum up the whole verse. Here's what the verse is saying. I cannot believe you're being ignorant. And I cannot believe that it seems like somebody has put a spell on y'all because y'all are turning away from grace and going back to the law. He said, I preach to y'all in such a way that Christ was crucified before y'all. What does he mean by that? I'm going to explain that when he says that Christ was portrayed among you as crucified. This is what it's saying in the original language. It's saying that Paul preached in such a way, Pastor Jamie, his, the way he articulated the crucifixion, Grandma, it made the Galatians feel as if they were actually there. You ever met somebody who, who's a good storyteller? Yeah. And you're like, man, I felt like I was like, yeah. or maybe a good movie, right? Because a movie is, is a story. Like yeah. somebody makes movies, right? I've watched good movies where you're like, man, that was a good movie. And you're like, man, and you got so caught up into it, right? As if it was really happening. Come on now. Some of you got, you get mad at your novellas, right? Because so-and-so is with somebody else, right? Or you watch a movie, Jamie says, I do. <laughs> right? He does, I know. And then are you, are you, maybe you watch a, a movie and it made you cry, a love movie. Yeah. Somebody died, a, a movie about death, it made you cry. You know it's not real, but what? It grabbed you. Yeah. Are y'all with me? What I'm trying to say? That's what, the, that's, what, that's what it's saying here. Paul's saying, I preached in such a way that it grabbed y'all. Y'all weren't there when Christ was crucified. He said, but I preached it in such a way that it seemed in your eyes that Christ was being crucified before you. I love that. Let me give you an example. Go to Acts chapter 26 of Paul's preaching. I'm, while you're turning there, I'm going to tell you the story, Pastor Jamie. Paul, the same one that wrote Galatians, he, uh, chapter 26, Acts chapter 26. Paul Sister Mary is being arrested. He's arrested because he's preaching the gospel. And what they do, Pastor Jamie, is they take him before several kings. He goes from one jail to another jail, right? Because the other one was like, I mean, I don't know what to do with you. Go see the other one. And then he gets to another, another, jail, another ruler, and this ruler is named King Agrippa, St. King Agrippa. King Agrippa. And, and if you read Acts chapter 26, we're not going to read it because it'll be the whole chapter. But if you read the chapter, Paul stands before King Agrippa. And basically he tells King, King Agrippa, says, okay, Paul, go ahead. You know, we're listening. And Paul begins to give his testimony. Paul says, you know, these Jews here, they don't realize that I'm preaching about the same God they believe in. And that God is Jesus because Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies of Moses. I'm summarizing, Pastor Jamie. That's what he tells them because he gets into the Old Testament. He says, Jesus fulfilled all the testimony, all the uh, Old Testament prophecies that these Jews over here are, are saying that I'm preaching false doctrine. And then he, tar- he, he starts to tell a King Agrippa. He says, King Agrippa, he says, Jesus did all these wonderful things. Jesus saved, Jesus healed, Jesus delivered. He's the one to come, the one that will end all things. He's, he's above all, you know, all that good stuff. He preaches faith, Grandma. And then you know what King Agrippa says? Look what he says in Acts chapter 26. This is King Agrippa's response after Paul preached to him. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. 
Why am I using this? Because Paul was able to articulate his words in such a way, Pastor Jamie, that even a heathen king was almost willing to give his life to God. He's like, Paul, you preached in such a way, you almost made me a Christian for a moment. And what does Paul say? And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether such as I am. In other words, what? I want y'all to become a Christian. I want y'all to be safe. I don't want y'all to deal with all these chains that I'm dealing with. Well, he don't want you to deal with the persecution that he's having to deal with. But again, my point is this. Paul was so persuasive in his language that he was almost willing to save. It almost caused King Agrippa to get saved. Church, if King Agrippa would have got saved, that would have changed the whole region of his day. That would have been a miracle for that city. And yet Paul tells him in, in Galatians what? I've preached in such a way that, man, y'all, it was like if Jesus was killed before y'all. That's why, church, when you hear a message by the Holy Spirit, you can feel it, right? Yeah. And remember, I remember Sister Annie always, you know, when people give me testimonies about what I say or Pastor Jamie says, it's encouraging. I don't get prideful, Diane. It encourages me yeah. because sometimes I'm up here preaching and, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, church. I can preach to y'all even though I see you every week, but sometimes I always ask myself, did I make an impact? Yeah. Did somebody's life get touched? Were they blessed by what I said? Were they, were they encouraged by it? And I remember Sister Annie saying one time, she says, every time y'all preach, I feel it. I can feel it. I know it's of God. As you kept saying that, I feel it. It speaks to me. What is that? That's the anointing. Yeah. In church, you, you, want, you want to be able to sit in a church where you feel the anointing. Yeah. Right? When the word goes forth, you can say, man, they got the Holy Ghost. Right? Because I've heard a lot of dry preachers. And they, they, they say they're preachers, but they ain't preachers. They need to be working at a body shop or something. <laughs> Preaching, yeah, they'll put you to sleep, right? But there's some preachers you meet, and, man, they just touch you. It's like it speaks to your heart, right? Just like we would all say here, especially in our church, because we're all mainly Hispanics here, but we would say, right, like Spanish Christian music is different, right, than yeah. Christian English music because it touches you in a different way. Yeah. Spanish music touches you. I heard one preacher say that Spanish is the language of heaven and the language of love, right? And so what I'm saying to you is that why can you say that? Because you can feel it. It speaks to you in a different way, that language. So it is when somebody's under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When You know when somebody's truly anointed because you can feel it. When they preach, there's an anointing there. Church, if you hear somebody preaching and you don't feel nothing, then they're not anointed. And you, church, we don't need just the word. We need the anointing to go forth. See, that's why it's not it's not one or the other, Mary. It's not do we need preaching or do we need the spirit? You need both because somebody can preach and it could be dry as bread. But or somebody can have too much spirit and there ain't no word. What you want is you want the word to go for it, but you want the anointing to go behind it. Amen. Amen. Somebody after church Sunday uh, uh, came up to me and said, Pastor Larry, everything you said today was for me. Everything that you've been speaking, the last two, three services I've been coming, has been for me. I don't know. I just come up here, church, and I say what the Lord puts on my heart. Right. And see, some of y'all, you know, some of you in here, I'm not saying any, well, I shouldn't say y'all in here because there may not be anybody in here. But if you are in here and you say, oh, well, he said that last week or he made that comment last week. Well, I may be making it for somebody else that needs to hear it. Right. And, and that could be the comment that some, it, it blesses somebody. Yeah. Why? Because the anointing is there. And see, Paul was so anointed, church, that he, his words were so persuasive that King Agrippa almost got saved. Why? He had the Holy Spirit within him. That's what we need, church. We need churches that have the anointing. I'll tell you one thing, Vicki. There's a lot of preachers out there. They got bigger churches, and they got the lights, and they got the fog machines. And it sounds, and they put the lights out low, and it sounds like you're at a dance, at a rock concert. And I'm not against that. I'm not saying, you know, we wouldn't have that if we had all that here. I'm, but all I'm saying is that one thing we can't let it become, we can't let it become a show. That's it. It can't just be about the lights. Yes. It can't just be about children's ministry. Yes. 
you know, how big is their children's church? Oh, do they have classes for this? Do they do they play? Do they go take them to the park or what? It can't be about all that. Those are good things, but it has to be. Are they? Do they have the anointing? Yes. Do they have the Holy Spirit? Amen. Because I don't want you know you, you, this. This should be your attitude. I don't want just good preaching. I want the Holy Spirit to be involved. Amen. Because if the Holy Spirit's not involved, church, then all this is in vain. Amen, somebody. Amen. So he says, go to, uh, we'll stop right there. How about that for tonight? Amen? Amen. Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap? Amen. Amen. I don't want to go any further because if I go further, we're going to be over time. Amen. So why don't we stand? Is there any questions? Yes, please do. You know, I've been, it's been a year and a half that I've been here. And I've been to a lot of church. Mm. Well, happily to my age. Yeah. But, and I've gone to Lakewood. Yeah. But to be honest with you, even going to the Catholic Church, even going to Lakewood, and going to any of the other churches, I never opened my Bible. Mm, yeah. Not until I came here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But then, you know, I, I'm the type that, you know, okay, I'm reading, but I want to understand it. I want to know what I'm reading. Yeah. So I started all over again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I Google and I do all this other stuff. Because I was, you know, and this is something I never had an interest in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until I came here. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Until I saw, you know, start listening. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's great. Amen. Amen. Give, give the Lord a hand clap for that. Amen. <laughs> Anybody else want to say something or share something? I can go to another church. I can sit there. And there's some things that are coming out of me. But I cannot be taught by anybody else. Because I know so much truth now. Yeah. I, I, I just, it doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. Amen. He is a God of grace and mercy and truth. Amen. That's so and good. We don't want no one to destroy people because of that. Yes, and that's so people true. People leave the church because of that. Mm, that's good, Mary. Yeah. And now I can see and I have felt the love of God like I've never felt it before in my life mm. because of that. Praise God. And I was one of the ones that was critical, like you would say, well, if you don't believe the way I believe in this and that, I would tell people. Yeah. I have compassion. That's good, Mary. Yes. So true. So true. Hold on. Uh, let Annie go first, and then we'll let you go. Go ahead, Annie. Praise God. Yes, that's so good. Yeah. That's good. Mary. The one the thing that I wanted to say was that when I started coming to church, I, I also went to a Catholic church. But everything we spoke to was my kids back then. We had a youth group, everything. Even got married to the Catholic church. But when I had my kids and I was going, something didn't seem right with me. And I think God was already trying to talk to me mm -hmm. and bring it out to me. And, you know, but when you've been raised so much in the church, it's kind of hard to pull out. 
Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. And even though I yeah. didn't know what it was, and it's hard to take that first step there. Yeah. But you know what? I am so grateful that I didn't listen to my conscience. I listened to God. Mm, that's and good. even though we, like, we have trials and tribulations, and God knows for the last couple of months I've been going through a lot of trials and tribulations, with, and you're right, what you said in church Sunday, family will be the first one to attack you, the mm. first one to put you down, put you down, do everything, throw everything at you. And if you lose your temper, like I lost my Yeah. Thank you for still loving me. Thank you for still being by my side and, and lead me, guide me to what you want me to do. And I did explode. Yeah. I hadn't exploded that way in a long time. But when I did, God kind of, like you said, wisdom. He said, okay, start doing this. So what I did, I started putting the trials I was going through. And I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to stop. This is what we're going to end up doing. And I don't want to hear no more. And that was it. Mm-hmm. And I said, if we got to like it, don't come to my house. We don't want to hear it. I will shut the door on you. Sometimes that's hard to do, especially with your family. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you love your kids, you love your grandkids, but sometimes you got to put a stop. And I just thank you guys. Thank you, Pastor Larry, Pastor Jamie. Mm-hmm. Y'all do listen to us, even though it does. And I'm glad we have a small church, because if we were in a big church, you wouldn't have had to talk to us like yeah. you do now. Yeah. And, but we will have a big church. Amen. 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 <laughs> Yes. Anybody else? All right, let's stand. Amen. Thank y'all so much. That was wonderful. I had a good time tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. We're going to pray for uh, Olivia. Olivia and Nathan, which is El- uh, Elvira's sister and nephew. Amen. And uh, Mary, you want to share? Can you share? What's going well, yeah. So let's continue to remember Olivia and um, Nathan in that situation. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Carmen. Sister Carmen. Sister Carmen. Carmen and the babies, Bridget's uh, Bridget's babies. Amen. She had her babies a little early. And they're going to, they, uh, she had, I think she had like three more months. So she had them early in there in Corpus. Um, like a children's hospital and being uh, taken care of. And they'll be in there for a while. Amen. And, uh. They're still doing great, amen. So let's just continue to pray for them, amen. She was supposed to have, so she had twins, and so uh, yes, let's continue to pray for them. That's gonna be more great grandkids for my grandma, amen. <laughs> All right, let us, let's bow our heads and uh, oh, let's also pray for uh, Sister Lily, uh, Jamie's stepmom. God knows what it is. Um, it's I don't want to share because she might not want me, but she shared something with us, and I want us to continue to pray for her, okay? So let's and my grandpa. Let's continue to pray for my grandpa. Amen. All right, let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness today. I thank you for your word that went forth today, God. I was just so grateful, Lord, that in all of our getting, we get understanding. And Father, God, I'm thankful, Lord, that even though, God, that we're not a perfect church, Lord, but we come together when we need to come together, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, and I pray, God, that we will continue to walk in unity and forgiveness, Lord, in mercy and compassion for our brothers and our sisters. And Lord, we just lift up God, Elvira's uh, sister to you and her nephew, Father God. I'm believing you, Lord, to touch him right now, God. Lord, just let your spirit flood that hospital room, God, and let your ministering spirit just begin to flow all over his body. I thank you, Lord. 
that you're touching him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord. Yes. Whatever his body needs, God, touch every nerve, every muscle, every organ, Father God. I speak life to it in the mighty name of Jesus, God. And Lord, I pray for Olivia as well, God. I just ask you to touch her mind and her heart, God. Lord, just remove every ounce of discouragement, Lord. Fill her with your joy. Fill her with your love, Lord. Give her the encouragement that she needs, God. I'm asking you, Father God, to do what only you can do, Lord. You're the God of the impossible, Lord. And there's nothing too hard for you, Lord. This situation that they face is nothing, and it's not difficult for you to move in their life. And I'm believing you to do it, Father God. And Lord, we just continue to lift up Bridget, Lord, and David, Lord, and the babies. God, I'm asking you to touch those babies, Lord. Continue, Lord, to sustain their life. Continue to give them life, God. I believe, God, they're going to continue to grow and they're going to be healthy. They're going to be strong, Lord. And they're just going to be a miracle of your healing power. And just encourage Bridget, Lord, and, and David, God, continue to give them the physical strength to be over there, Lord. Supply every need that they need financially, Lord, to be able to be staying over there with the babies, God. I know you're more than able to do it, God. And Lord, I lift up my grandpa to you, yes. Father God. I'm believing you to continue to touch him in his physical yes. body, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that every cancer cell is gone out of his body in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, every pain, even now, Father, you're removing out of his body, Lord. No more pain, God. I believe, Father God, you're going to start to give him the best sleep he's ever had, Lord. Restful, strength, Lord. No more frustration, God. And I just believe in you, God, that he's going to be a testimony. He is a testimony, Lord, because you have satisfied his life. And, Lord, he will live and never die to declare your works grace lord and you continue to carry him this far and i believe you're going to carry him even further lord and i thank you for what you're doing in his life and lord we just pray for sister lily lord you know what she needs god and i'm asking you to touch my sister lord do what only you can do father god i know god that you are a god that can do miracles and lord you're a god lord that can do the impossible and i'm asking you to touch her lord give her what she needs right now god and just help her through this in jesus mighty name and everybody said, amen, amen. church. Thank y'all. We love y'all. We'll see y'all Sunday morning.